uh, what I would like to to try to do here is to give to all the attenders a general overview of what it is the micro city and what it is it is not, and how we use it to un unveil to reveal mystery in science in this ca in this case in insect. So many of my colleagues when they think about micro city because they are very uh, used to uh, uh, scanning microscopy. Uh, okay, I will try to. They, they think that just like in uh, scanning mic electron microscopy, you can put inside your, your sample and you can see immediately uh, the image. So they interfere that with micro CT, they can do exactly the same and immediately they will have beautiful uh, internal structure of the insect that they are looking for or in any structure at least not exactly that easy so i will explain what is exactly micro ct uh, micro ct works with a uh, x source a digital x-ray detector so what we put in in the middle in between the, both the sample and we turn on the uh the x-ray source I don't know what happened here. Okay, when we turn on the X-ray, what we get is a shadow projection, a re radiography of the sample. To be able to reconstruct the entire sample, it's necessary to uh, get many, many, many pictures, many radiographies, so the sample is rotating every few degrees. So normally when I do a, a scan of three, uh, 360 degrees, every 0.1 degree I take a picture. So no, a normal scan need at least, or uh, get at least uh, 3,600 images. So what we need then is a good computer to process all the image. So this is a schematic uh, a way to see what is happening. We have the prepare sample. We put then in the sample holder inside the micro the uh, instrument. Uh, we scan then, so we get a lot of X-ray, and then with reconstructive software uh, and cleaning the image and orientating inappropriately, we can get beautiful uh, uh, cross-sectional images. Uh, many, many hundreds of thousands of cross-sectional images that with a rendering uh, software, we can get rendered images, in this case, of the external anatomy. But we can go inside, I will show in, in, in the next picture that I will show you. So, but how can we prepare the sample? The insect has a very thick cuticle. The external skeleton is enough to be able to reconstruct it without any preparation. But to be able to see the internal structure, it's better to dry up them. Because the, the uh, difference in, in, in the uh, uh, transparency of X-ray in between the structure and the air is so high that it's quite easy to reconstruct later. And to make it easier, there are many, many ways that like we have been using something based in uh, staining the, the animal with iodine. So in the normal process of dehydration, the last step with uh, absolute alcohol, in this alcohol, we have a 1% one, 1 iodine in solution. So later, we dry up the sample with hexamethyl dizilazan and uh, later we mount it in different ways to scan the sample. Here we have the method that we uh, have been uh, saying with best result. So, uh, not many years ago, we discovered that the base of ticks is a melamine resin phone created by the company Buzz. Uh, it's very transparent to X-ray. So it's quite easy to mount uh, insects in many different positions. And look at the, this bee, the honeybee. The melamine phone is not visible. Note that if you, if you are going to a very small pixel size, like one, two, three micron, you will see the melamine form, but not with higher 
pixel size. When the animals are smaller, in the beginning we were just putting them straight forward in tubes, in Eppendorf tube or plastic straw tube, but they need later uh, a lot of work to eliminate the plastic, uh, so in the reconstruction we cannot see uh, annoying artifacts or, or, or garbage. So we discovered that if we glue it with cyanoacrylate uh, to an iron fishing line, the little animal like this termite is so small, or this little beetle that uh, is less than or roughly one millimeter long, or this fruit fly, etc. And later we mount it with plasticillin and we cover with a plastic straw tube, to, so we avoid that when the fan starts to, to work in, uh, because the temperature inside, inside the, the microtomograph increase, the, the sample will not move, so we will not, we will not get blurred images. So uh, many people wrote, uh, have been writing me to ask me, how can you get so nice color uh, at the different uh, organs uh, and structure? And we uh, say a very easy and straightforward way, that is with uh, CD box, just playing with the color transfer function curves and the transparency, transparency curves. So in this way, like I put it in this uh, slide, I, uh, I got straightforward the color of this uh, house fly. So here you can see the brain, all the fly muscle, et cetera, the, the, the muscle of the legs, and et cetera, et cetera. Or even here you have uh, a movie where we can see every, every structure in roughly in different colors. So it's quite easy to study the, in the anatomy. Or here you can see uh, the hair or the, uh, a sagittal section of the hair with the brain and all the, uh, the internal structure. But to be able to get a very, very well isolated, segmented every single organ, uh, it, there is a manual segmentation way that is cost time, you need quite a lot of time to every, every single uh, image, uh, you need to outline manually every one, so it need time, but at, at the end, the result is very apparent. Look at this uh, coffee board beetle that has only uh, two millimeter long, less than two millimeter long. Uh, this is a female, how uh, nice it looks like. You can get the same result with many, many software. Uh, with City uh, Ball, you could get similar thing that uh, you have in the movie here. We have been studying the feeding mechanism of sapsucker insect. In collaboration with some groups here in, in Spain, in, in Madrid, we were studying how an aphid uh, we are feeding on a, on a sugar beet leaf. To be able to do that, uh, they were interested in knowing if the graph, the electric penetration graph that they get when the, the, uh, the uh, estillate are, are reaching the xylem or the phloem, uh, the, the graph that they get is completely different. So uh, they, they wanted to see a microtomography exactly the moment where the, the the piercing structure uh, reach the xylem or phloem, etc. So we needed to to freeze the animal when they were sucking. So there are different ways here. Uh, we describe it one with uh, dry ice. We have been using also uh, liquid nitrogen. So here we have prepared the sample in uh, on uh, the tip of a uh, a nylon. Uh, uh, um, fishing line, uh, unmounted, like, uh, like I showed before. And look at how, what we could get. We could get here is how the animal looks like with a, a gold wire to be connected to the electric, electrical uh, device. And here, this image of the, of the aphids looks very similar to uh, electronic uh, electron microscopy. And look at all the, the estillate, how it go into the, the vessel, the plant vessel, and we were analyzing everything, how they look like. And in, in another uh, sub-sucker, this is the European spittle, spittle bag. Uh, we could see even 
the penetration hole here. Look at all the vegetal epidermal uh, cells and how the stilet penetrate in different parts and the corresponding electrical uh, penetration graph. A similar thing, uh, a study we performed in when we were studying the, the Asian citrus silly that produce uh, citrus greening that is a, an incredible, horrible pest that is destroying orange trees are, around the world. Look at how we could see the animal here and how the estillate penetrates inside the vessel and even we could see all the structure uh, and uh, if you compare all this cross section look exactly the same as you can get uh, doing similar cut for a, a, a normal or regular microscopy. We have been using also uh, the micro CT to unveil, unveil biological survival strategies. And as an example, I will explain to you uh, how we could explain why a caddis fly larvae changed the, the pupal case architecture. So the, the caddis flies are very similar to moth. Uh, and when and the larvae are aquatic, and when they pupate, they enclose in these tubes and they close it on one tip. When we were studying, uh, well, here would you, have, you have a typical uh, uh, brooks where uh, caddis flies can live, here are the larvae. And we were studying this uh, Iberian uh, endemic uh, species, and we observed several pupal cases strange because they, they have two concentric tubes. Why? So, so much work, so much extra effort to do that. We, we observed this under the software with a uh, data viewer or with CT analyzer or here with a CD box. And we can see how there is a double tubes. Why? If we look at the habitat where these animals live, they live in, uh, in little brooks that dry up in summer. But in summer, remain little dish, very shallow dish, with only one uh, less than two centimeters deep. So imagine that the pupae is inside the tube and the tube remain it in this position, in any of these position, when the water level is diminishing, this tube will remain outside of the water, so will dry up and the pupae will die. So if the, the, the larvae could solve the problem to stabilize, and so every half will wait similarly, there uh, the possibility that the tube remain horizontal will increase it. So the hypothesis, to be able to, to test the hypothesis, we couldn't cut, or we didn't want to, to cut every tube into exactly equal halfies, but with software, in this case, a case with CD box, CT, bo uh, CT analyzer, sorry, we could divide it, and uh, here the representation with CD box, and we could measure the volume of every single tiny grain of sand and the surface, and we were comparing the internal versus the external surface, and look at that there were no statistical dif differences. But the most important thing, always the external part is somewhat lighter because the tap lack, because this, uh, this tube came from pupae having already emerged the adult. So uh, here is the same thing. So even representing in different color the thickness structure, we can see that the thicker structure are in both tip. And the new tube is constructed with very light material. Uh, another uh, example of how to unveil a uh, secret in the secret life of the coffee berry borer is a, a very tiny beetle that caused damage in, in, in uh, coffee plantation all over the world and drill 
uh, tunnel. So the, how they live inside the coffee berries was unknown, really. So we could have, we had the opportunity to, to travel to Vietnam, uh, visit a coffee plantation. We collect their coffee berries and those with a, a whole uh, signal that has been uh, colonized by this beetle. We were starting then through the X-ray, and we observed here the entry, a tunnel of a pioneer female, and here something more complex, so it's on their own. So we could reconstruct uh, everything. The most important thing is the pioneer uh, female. Look at the tunnel. It's not straightforward. It's in, in a thick, thick shape, exactly the same that even the Roman construct the entry to the castle. So to avoid that the enemies go uh, go and en uh, enter into very easily, even uh, the female normally is in this in this position uh, blocking the entry. So parasitoid for, for parasitoid is very difficult to go in uh, with uh, with the animal start to colonize the remain of the coffee berry. We could discover that doesn't colonize all over. Uh, homogeneously. Look at that. We could segment every single state from X to pupae, and they are from the uh, periphery to the internal part. So clearly there is a sequence of colonization. So clearly they start with the external part uh, where uh, that is not dry up. Another uh, mystery that we could uh, unveil was the production of pheromones in the Asian citrus seal. It's well known that the leaves of orange trees where uh, this insect has been on attracts other individuals of the same species. No matter if it has been male or female have been on the leaf. But no one knows who produced the pheromones. So we were observing in the ventral side of the animal, in the coxae, this little force you can see this little pores, but thanks to the uh, microtomography, we could make cross section. And we see here the pore that communicate with coxal gland. So clearly, this coxal gland must be responsible for the production of pheromones. But uh, how they recognize uh, uh, XX to the other one when they are close to each other? Has been observed that uh, these animals, they uh, they make some sort of dance and they touch with the with the antennae. When we are looking inside the, the hair, look at this is the base of the antennae. And here is a pouch, a little sac, the gl antenna gland that never has been discovered until our work. So clearly, this must produce the pheromone to recognition in very close, close uh, distance. Of course, uh, microtomography is very good for anatomical studies. And classically, uh, the anatomy of insects has been done manually. And for instance, a uh, classical uh, author is uh, Snowgrass, and he did an incredible uh, book on the anatomy of the honeybee. And we decided to compare the, uh, his study with the European honeybee, and uh, to compare if the results that we could get with the microcity were comparable to those uh, obtained with uh, 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 classical method methods. So look at that. When we were studying the anatomy of the, of, of the uh, internal anatomy of the uh, honeybee, we were looking exactly, exactly, exactly the same. Not only the, look at the, the hurt, the dorsal base with all the muscle, exactly like ignograss drawn years ago. Or here you can see that he's drawing on the nervous system. Look at him there, the brain. Look. So clearly we can get similar results. So we, we undertake in collaboration with uh, some colleagues in, in, in Maryland, with Fernando Vega, uh, on a study of the anatomy of the coffee berry borer, uh, the little beetle. And we discovered, for instance, that male have different number of, of seg uh, apparent segments. Look at that. Eight, again, seven in female. Uh, we discovered male sexual external sexual character as male 
never go out of the of the uh, berries. They remain inside the, ber the berries. They don't fly. They have reduced uh, wings, so they don't have muscle to move the wings as the female. And the female are very apparent, but in male they are lacking. Uh, we could study the internal anatomy in a way that never has been uh, seen before. Uh, it's something that we saw in, in drawing uh, in entomological books, but nothing similar extract directly from the reality, because this is not animation, this is real. When studying the anatomy, we could discover, for instance, that male and female have dif sexual difference in the digestive. Look at how big is the stomach of the male compared with the female, but because the male is shorter than female and they have the same length of the, of the intestine tube, they have more circumvolution in comparison with men, with female. Another interesting thing is that female has bigger and more complex brain in comparison with male. And a female has bigger, larger brain. Look at the, the brain of the, of the male. Even the eyes, this was known, the eyes is, are reduced in male because the male, they don't need to solve problems because they stay inside the, of the coffee berries and they co copulate with their own uh, sister. So they are very insectual, incestuous. Uh, or even studying the reproductive system, we could describe the areas and look at all the organs uh, in the way that we knew from entomology, but in a, a special way because it has not been deformed in, by preparation. When studying the respiratory system of this insect, most of the, of the uh, holes that communicate the external, uh, the exterior with the internal tube of the tracheal system are below the elytra. But it, there is a big mesothoracic uh, spiracle. And this one is very exposed to dust. So how they solve it? We discover that they have three filter before to entry to go to the action from where the uh, uh, tracheal tube depart. So this is something very interesting that we discovered with it. To be able to study in, uh, in detail all the tubular system, uh, we use a, a, a method that is a schema in, in schema, a schematically shown here. So we scan uh, animal, just we, uh, we kill them and immediately we scan them. Why? because uh, the insect, they have all the internal organs uh, uh, immersed in emolymph, in liquids. So when we, uh, we scan them, this liquid, this water, uh, is very opaque to x-ray. So we see nothing, almost nothing, but we see the air contained in, inside the tubular system. So we uh, did uh, this uh, procedure with CT analyzer, linearization, we clean it all the, of the dust that appear, the artifact, and the preliminary random. And we start to see here with CD box how it looks like. And after to clean it properly, even we could uh, represent the different tube uh, in different color according with the lumen diameter. Uh, and uh, we calculate even the total length. And as a curiosity, uh, if we compare the total length or tooth of this animal with a normal man, uh, it should have around 123 meters. So what is more than a, a, a football court or field. Here you can see it and how it looks like. So, uh, Continue with internal anatomy and other insects. This is the, the Asian citrus psyllid. Uh, of course, we could study uh, every organ. But another thing that was interesting is discover sexual difference in the rectum when we compare comp male with female. Male has a very long rectum, and male has a shorter 
But the most important is that the, at the end, before the annals, there are a rectal ampulla. Why? It has been observed that the female, they propel, they are dropping, like a, 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 a gachan, a chot. They propel it. So the dropping of the female are propelled far away from the nymph, from the, uh, the young uh, individual, or from the eggs. So they avoid, they avoid to contaminate with uh, feces uh, their, their progeny. But the male, they don't have this problem, and they are not so hygienic. So their rectum is different. And also, another thing that we uh, observe is that uh, is a big discussion in those, this appendage in blue here, this mid gut appendage that we have here, are malpigian tubules, tubules or not. So we compare what, what we obtain with micro CT and with a typical uh, malpigian tub tubules observed un under confocal microscopy. And they, they are very similar, the structure, so most probably they are not uh, uh, appended simply, but they are uh, malpigian tubules and many other authors propose it. Uh, when we study on this species, the, uh, the reproductive system, we could not only uh, uh, study every single part in their position, but also disassemble, uh, disassemble and uh, uh, assembly again them, and study properly every single structure. Look at this, is, I will not uh, go into, into detail. This is a, a stomatic pump that is in discussion with muscle, with a valve, it's exactly amazing in so tiny animal uh, how complicated the structure. Even we could see inside the spermatozoa, as has been seen in uh, uh, line microscopy. Or look at the, the penis. The penis of this species was known uh, with a, a slide microscopy preparation, so it was uh, deformed. In, uh, but thanks to micros the micro city, we could make a very detailed uh, a study of the of the genitalia and penis. And when studying the uh, female reproductive system and the bacterium, the bacterium is very important for many insects. So there is an organ here, is a green, that has uh, bacteria important to to produce uh, substance or metabolism for the uh, fun uh, normal uh, functionalism uh, of the organism. So we could study it properly. And look at how the uh, bacterium is on the, uh, uh, the eggs. So the bacteria pass through the chorion to the eggs, so they go to the progeny. Even uh, when we study uh, in detail the bacterium and we did uh, cross-section cut, we observe exactly the same structure as with confocal mic uh, microscopy. So it's another comparison of the utility of microscopy. I would like to finish uh, my, my presentation uh, appealing uh, of saying that MicroCT is not only a, a resource research tool. Uh, some, some years ago, uh, a French woman wrote me saying, Professor, did you realize that you are producing real art? And then I realized that I, when I compare this is still life frame of painter with some of my image, whereas they are art and they can be used for education because they are, they are very attractive for students. So look at that uh, when studying in, in, in zoology or in entomology, the uh, uh, anatomy of a, a, a bee, how can the student be attracted in many different ways? And the most important thing is that thanks to uh, the, the city box for mobile device for iOS and Android, you can get the same result to play with in your uh, mobile device, in your tablet, on your smart, smartphone. So look at the same uh, uh, Amazon B uh, observed in my smartphone. These are my finger, how I move to cut. Here is the hair, inside is the brain and so on. So uh, this student can play with to study anatomy and even when doing research, I, uh, I 
I or any, any research can do uh, their study uh, at home uh, when, uh, or when it's traveling in the bus or in the underground. Another important thing is just that all the scan can be printed in 3D. For instance, this is a, an info that may fly be these albinos. This is a, a movie, but this is the, the 3D printing that was done by SkyScan, now Brooker Microcity long ago. So, and then we put it in the windows and in our uh, exposition in our department with Amigro. So a student can study their internal morphology because it appeared Sagittal uh, section. Or as an art, this is the, the hair of the Mason B cat with CD box and compared with uh, uh, an art live, still life. Uh, these are different images or uh, here is the, the um, Tracheal system of a damp beetle, or even the representation of a mayfly insect of this species with uh, in color that is really art. Or this is what's surprising for me, and even uh, was funny, because when I, wa I was studying uh, for uh, Scarabius as a damp beetle, and I look it from the ventral side, it was looking at me exactly very similar to Obelix. Uh, so, in fact, it's very similar. Look at that. Even the eyes is clicking, yeah? So, but this is the ventral, the ventral side of this beetle. Uh, even this representation of uh, the city box, uh, even producing a shadow there, a different views of the common house fly, or a different view of a, a fruit fly, or the ascent side uh, to see it. This is really art in different color according with the X-ray opacity. Or finally, what we produced recently, uh, what we have been producing the Micro City Anatomical Atlas of the ASEAN Citrus Silic uh, in uh, for a project that we finished in co uh, and we collaborate in, uh, with uh, people in North America uh, in a project, uh, the Citrus Greening uh, project. According with this honeybee that appeared in the, in the propaganda on uh, publicity of this talk, this honeybee, people ask me, how could you scan the flower and the bee together? This is a tricky. I scan the flower separately from the, the uh, honeybee and I put together with PowerPoint and survey. And but it's amazing. Uh, a few years, two years ago, uh, some people from uh, Oxford request my collaboration because they have been developing or they develop a robot the name has uh, the name is Ada, and this is the first artist robot. So they wanted to have the uh, cross-sectional image of this uh, honeybee. So they uh, printed it in, in in bronze, and they show it to the robot. So the robot Ada did different drawing. This is her her interpretation of the Van Gogh sunflower or the inspiration on this uh, painter of the Mahone V. Or even they show this pink painter, the uh, fall of the Regal Angels, and she interpret this honeybee in different way, deforming as the angel as falling down. So it, it is an amazing that my work has been inspir inspirating a robot in Oxford and probably the most strange, exciting thing for me that I never was, uh, uh, I didn't know that I was collaborating for them, was that I collaborate in a very marginal way with the film Ray Runner, uh, 2049. Uh, they wanted to, in, in the movie, appear uh, that the doctor Anna Esteline that produced, uh, uh, they put inside the brain of the replicant uh, dreams. And also she has a strange device that ca could change morphologies. So in the movie, they wanted to change the morphology from one species to another. So I scan 
insects in the highest quality that I could, and I sent them several, uh, more than 10,000 images in cross-section. Then they could re uh, reconstruct the image and make a skeleton of every single image. So this skeleton was modeled later, and look at the, uh, here how they could move the, the company bus, and at the end, in the movie, appear something like that. So this is what I scan. This is my, my rendering with CityBox, and these are the results that appear, the final result of the movie. So a lot of work for no more than 20 seconds in the movie. But they are really magicians. Uh, it's amazing how they could uh, return to, to the life to this insect. So uh, I'm finishing, and many people ask me and write me, uh, how can you get your result? So several years ago, in fact, many years ago, seven years ago, uh, I presented a, some sort of manual uh, with every single step. Now uh, should be updated in some little detail because the software has been improved uh, constantly. But every beginner following the, this manual very easily and very fast could get nice results. Like the, here you have the reconstruction of the hair of a, a hooter, an emitterer. Look at the, and here, how can uh, you can follow all the steps? So ask, and that's it. But before to finish, I would like to, to recognize the constant help of everyone in SkyScan First was the formal company who produced the mm, mm, SkyScan 1172 that I had, and his founder, Alexander Sasov, and all the staff, uh, Kill, Phil Salmon, uh, Swan Liu, Stefan Boons, uh, Vladimir Karitokotonov, uh, etc., etc., that has been supporting my constant increase. And uh, uh, I have been asking them to improve the software, new, new option, and they, as, with a lot of passion, they have been supporting me all the time. This is why I love the company, because I never f I felt alone or lost. Always I found the way that, or they found the way to help me. And thanks to them, I could uh, achieve the good result that I get now. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm finished. And if you like a uh, video, you can go to my YouTube uh, channel. I don't know what's happening. I, I cannot hear anything at all. Hello? Hi, Javier. Hello, Javier. just having some audio. Oh, there he is. Yeah, <laughs> sorry for the interruption. Uh, my uh, so connection. You didn't hear my voice. I could hear everything, but you could not hear me. So. Uh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Javier, for this for this presentation. Um, as mentioned in the beginning, you are uh, welcome to enter your questions in the Q&A panel, and I suggest we go right into those because several questions have been submitted already. Several people thank you for your very nice presentation and uh, send you your uh, th their best regards uh, all the way from Brazil, from your best friend, Marco Versiani. Wow. Um, 
Hi, Marco. Let's, start... <laughs> Let's start with the first question. Um, the question uh, is whether manual segmentation uh, is, is done in the Brooker software or whether you use other software for that. Uh, I have been doing both, uh, but the, the, the picture that I presented here was uh, came from Amira. Okay, thank you. Done also with a CT analyzer, exactly the same, yeah? Um, how long does it take you roughly to do those segmentations and reconstructions of the internal organs and, and the questions uh, is, is specifically for the honeybee? Uh, this is quite fast. If I, I will show you, uh, can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, it's coming up. For the honeybee, the only thing that you need is just to uh, play with the color function cubes in this way, and that's it. But to be able to avoid all the misty artifacts that normally appear after uh, uh, any scan, you need to, to run uh, a task that, that is described in the, in the uh, manual that I wrote. It's very simple. It just eliminates every single uh, uh, volume except the larger, the larger one, the largest one. So the larger one is your object, and every tiny little dot that appears surrounding every object, people normally they, they eliminate it, depleting the transparency cubes, but then they lose uh, a lot of detail of the animal. Yeah. If that's okay. okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, several questions also regarding the resolution. What is the resolution which you can obtain with MicroCT and which resolutions are typically used to scan your, uh, your insect samples? Okay, uh, for, the, for the honeybee, for instance, uh, I think I, I cannot remember, but probably four uh, micron per pixel is what I, but for instance, for the uh, coffee board, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, this is not for the coffee board. Uh, yeah. uh, the highest resolution that I can get is that one. In my, my, my uh, SkyScan 1172, I probably kill. You can answer better than me this, uh, because you have a new machine that with highest, higher <clears throat> resolution now, yeah? Yes, so for uh, our desktop scanners, uh, resolutions can be obtained down to 500 nanometer pixel size. If you would go to larger floor standing nano uh, CT systems, then Sixty nanometer pixel size. So that would be the best uh, possible depending on the size of the sample. The larger the samples, the lower the resolution um, becomes. Uh, I saw a question there, Kiel, uh, asking me if uh, the microcity can be used for a little uh, vertebrate. Here you have a lizard, in fact, a baby lizard. A scan, yeah? Yeah. So here you can see it. Is a baby lizard look at the opening in the cranium. Yep. More questions. Um, someone is interested into how you scan the flower. Did you dry it or did you scan it no. without drying? The the flower, I put it straightforward into the uh, the sampling holder, uh, attached with plasticine, and that's it. Is described in in uh, in the paper. Uh, seems also several people are interested in knowing how the insects are scanned. Whether uh, you apply contrasting techniques, drying techniques, or also just scan them as such. 
Probably they lose it by first. Yeah, okay. I, uh, I said that you can scan straightforward any insect, and you can you could get beautiful image of the outer, uh, the external surface. But to go in detail on the internal surface, you need to dry up the animal. But uh, if you dry up without any treatment, all the internal organs, most of them will be collapsed. So to be able to do that, normally the best way uh, that uh, the easiest way that I uh, I say many of them is uh, what is it described here? Uh, a specimen are dehydrated in standard ethanol series, but if you have the, your uh, insects already preserved in 70% ethanol, you can go straight forward from the 70% ethanol to 80% and 96% a week. This in this last step with 1% iodine dissolved solved in ethanol. And then you put it into hexamethyl dislazan and I dry. How long? It depends on the size of the animal. For instance, a, a beetle, a big beetle, need even several days. If, uh, if you don't dry up properly, you will see all the internal parts blurry, uh, not very well contrasted. So it's very important that the internal organs are completely dry. So the examethyl dizilazan or a point uh, device, you can use it. Um, next question. Uh, have you ever combined CT with MRI, Javier? Never. Because I didn't have any uh, MRI uh, in here in my lab. Yeah? But it should be amazing, yeah? Um, how long do your scans typically take, uh, Javier? Uh, everyone that I have been working with MicroCity know that you need to find the equilibrium in between quality uh, and time consuming. But normally, because I, 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 I I don't have any problem with the, the instruments. I can use it as, as much as I like. Um, some of them has been more than eight or 10 hours, but little animal you can get them in four hours or even less. It, it depends on the detail that you want to, to get. There are many studies that where people uh, uh, decide to scan in very high uh, magnification or with uh, uh, very small pixel size with uh, uh, taking uh, 1.1 1, uh, 1 degree every, every picture. You don't need so much uh, detail for many studies. So it depends on what you like to, or what, what is your, your goal. Yeah? And I think we can uh, close the session with the last question, uh, taking a look into the future. Javier, do you think it will ever be possible to scan live insects? Yes, it's up, up to uh, companies and the research in this field. It depends on how fast the scanner can scan. Yes, I, I did it. I, if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, you will see uh, a, a fruit fly in there. I don't have here the video. Uh, uh, sucking uh, liquid with sugar uh, with a contrast, so you can see how it's going through the intestine alive. But this is not the same that we construct organs and so on with an insect that is moving. So it's possible, if you, uh, in fact, there is some bibliographic paper that where the insect having uh, uh, slipped with uh, CO2, uh, so the, the insect remained uh, immobile, immobilized during the scan. But uh, always this, it has the, 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 uh, the handicap that many uh, organs are very transparent to X-ray. And because they are surrounded by liquid, it's hard to distinguish all the 
uh, uh, the limits in between the organs, one organ and the other. But it can be done. Yeah. For instance, this flower, the rosmarino, has been also done without any preparation. I put it in directly. Okay, thanks, uh, Javier, for commenting on that. Um, I would like to thank you once again and also all our participants. We appreciate your attention and, uh, and interaction today. We had a, a lot of questions, which is really great. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope to see you, of course, uh, next time. Have a great day and take thanks care. Bye bye. Thank you, Kiel.